Okay, here it is, the Plamp 2. The original Plamp uh, is similar to this, um, and it's been very popular, uh, but um, it, had, it had certain aspects that we thought could be improved on, particularly on the clip end of, of the Plamp. Uh, so we completely redesigned the clip, and the difficulty in designing this clip is that on one end of the spectrum, it needs to be able to hold a very delicate flower uh, and not damage the flower at all. And then on the other end of the spectrum, it needs to be able to hold a pretty heavy uh, reflector or diffuser. And it's pretty difficult to have a clip that's going to do all of those things. It has, it's strong enough to hold diffusers, but delicate enough to hold, um, you know, delicate plants. So what we did on the new plant, on the plant two, is instead of having a traditional clothespin type uh, clip that uses a spring uh, to apply the force to the jaws, we use a thumb screw activated clip. So let me just zoom in on this clip here. Okay, so here is the new clip for the plant version two. You can see it's got this thumb screw, and when you twist the thumb screw, it activates the jaws, opening and closing the jaws. Now the nice thing about the thumb screw is it really does a good job of, of hitting those two ends of the spectrum. Uh, if you're trying to hold a delicate plant, um, you can just tighten the thumb screw until it just barely grabs um, uh, the plant stem and avoid damaging it. But if you want to grab something like a reflector, uh, you can really crank down that thumb screw and, and clamp it quite a bit harder than you ever could with a uh, clothespin type clip. So the thumb screw activation um, is, a, is a big improvement. Another thing that sort of works in conjunction with the, th the thumb screw uh, in terms of uh, being able to hold delicate plants are these foam inserts in the jaws. Um, so we have this sort of recessed area with foam inserts and so if you're grabbing a really delicate plant, um, not only do you have the finesse of the thumb screw, but you have these padded jaws which really allow you to be delicate. So let me just do an example here. Here's a, uh, this is a pretty delicate plant. It looks like it's maybe some kind of relative of a, of a mint plant. It's got a square stem and the stem is pretty, uh, uh, pretty fragile. Uh, this one's been sitting on my table for a while, so it's a little limp, but uh, if I open the, these jaws up, and I can just, I'm just barely holding that right now. There's hardly any force on it. No damage is being uh, done to the, uh, the stem of this plant. So you have a lot of finesse with this new clamp. Now also on the, on the clamp you have these, uh, you have a hole that goes in between the two jaws, two arch shaped recesses in each jaw. Um, so one use for that is uh, you can, when you close the clamp all the way, something can protrude through that hole, which sometimes is useful if you want to constrain something, but you don't want it to, to actually be clamped. Um, so something, uh, a stem or something can go through there, um, and you can still manipulate it, but not actually clamp it. Now the other nice thing about this recess is that uh, it makes it really easy to hold cylindrical objects um, securely. So let me just give an example of that. So here's a, a sort of pencil diameter branch. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. And you can see that thing is in, that thing is in there really good. You really got control of it uh, because of that recess. Kind of move up to a larger size. And does an equal a really good job of holding that too. That's in there nicely. Uh, and you can go all the way up to uh, this is probably three quarters of an inch or so, maybe a little less. Um, and it's going to hold that really well too. Move that around. Even flashlights. Here's a small uh, mini mag light, and then one size up. This is this is about the maximum size that you can hold in that recess, but it holds it very well. So. Now, also, the, uh, when you close the clamp jaws, you can see there's a little, there's sort of a space in the back here. And that space is enough so that you can hold a piece of foam board or a piece of cardboard and shove it all the way back in the jaws of the clamp. Uh, you also have these two foam pieces which are used to hold delicate plants, but also um, will, will compress and grab um, a thin flat sheet that's stuck in the jaws of this. So something like, for instance, this business card, if I want to stick this in there, it does a great job. That thing's in there really good. So thin piece 
of paper holds well. Here's a piece of foam core board, which maybe you would use for uh, a lens shade to keep uh, to keep flare from being a problem. Uh, holds that really well. I mean, it's in there securely. Here's a piece of cardboard with some foil on it. Holds that like a champ. So almost anything that you can think of to put in this clip, it holds it uh, very well and securely. There's another thing about these jaws that's very important. Um, and that that is these two V-shaped notches. I don't know how well that's showing up, but right here and here, there's two notches. And we call those um, uh, reflector notches. Uh, because basically, these are used to hold the um, the steel rim on diffusers and reflectors. Okay, so here's a cloth uh, reflector. Uh, it's got a piece of cloth, and then on the outside, uh, there's a, uh, a steel uh, ring uh, that that holds the uh, the, the diffuser taut. Um, and these little notches are designed to grab that ring. So before, with a sort of a clothespin type clip, let me grab the old plant. So here's the old plant, it's got sort of a closed a spring clip. If you try to grab one of these diffusers, it's really kind of grabbing the, the cloth here, and it's just very floppy and not very, not, not, not a very secure uh, connection at all. And you don't have a lot of control over adjusting the angle of it and that sort of thing. Now on the new plant, once that metal rim is, uh, is, is being grabbed by those two V-shaped notches, um, you have a really firm grip on the reflector and you can really manhandle this thing around, change the angle. Um, so it's really a big improvement in terms of holding reflectors and diffusers. So the combination of the added force that you can get with the thumb screw uh, and these V-shaped notches really allow you to, uh, to grab reflectors and diffusers. So that's the clip. That's the most important change uh, for the uh, plant two. Uh, but we did make another significant change and that is the diameter of the lock line that we used. Uh, on the old plant, you can see it has a much smaller diameter lock line and the new one is, is much thicker. Now, um, the added beefiness of this lock line does give a little bit more holding power uh, to to the uh, the plant, but not as much as, as would appear uh, because it's not just the diameter um, of these segments that dictates how well it'll hold weight. It's also how much friction is in between each uh, segments. And it turns out the smaller lock line, um, they sort of have a tighter fit, so there's more friction between them. Um, so it kind of evens out a little bit. There's a little bit more holding power with the uh, the larger diameter uh, lock line, uh, but what you really get as a benefit is stiffness. On the old plant, if you when you position it and let go, it's kind of always bobbling around, and that's not the end of the world. Um, but it does make it a little difficult to know exactly where you've positioned uh, the clip, and sometimes it needs to be pretty precise. Um, because it takes a while for it to settle down. And also when you're taking pictures and when the, when the mirror slaps up, um, vibrations travel uh, through the tripod and they will actually vibrate the plant. Um, and that can blur your images. So the stiffer the plant is, the less likely you are to have issues with that. Um, now having said that, I always suggest using mirror lockup if your camera has that function, whenever you're holding your subject with the plant. Um, so if you're holding a deflector or a reflector or a diffuser or something like that, um, then that, that doesn't make any difference. But if you're holding your subject with the plant and the plant is attached to your tripod, I always use a mirror lockup because um, there's always a chance that vibration is going to travel and cause some blurriness. Um, uh, but the new plant is much stiffer, so you have less of that to worry about. Uh, and uh, it's much easier to, it just feels a lot better to position it without having it wiggle around. It still will wiggle, but even when it does, it settles down a lot faster. So it's, a, it's a much more pleasurable to use, and you do get a little bit more uh, maximum holding power with the larger lock line compared to the, uh, the old plant. So the only thing left here is the, the large clamp, and that has remained unchanged from the original clamp. 
it's a uh, high quality clamp made of uh, I think it's glass reinforced plastic uh, we've sent thousands of these out the door and we haven't had hardly any trouble with them so we're pretty confident in uh, the build of these um, and it's a nice comfortable clamp uh, we also modify the jaws of this clamp you can kind of see this v-shaped notch a little chamfer on uh, on the two jaws and what that allows it to do is it allows it to grab a cylindrical object better than uh, the way these jaws uh, normally come so on this tripod leg when those, those little chamfers they kind of grab the cylindrical exterior of this tripod leg and make it so it's very difficult for it to pop off. Um, particularly on 3 Series Gitzo legs, without the chamfer, um, it's uh, very easy to kind of, once you're moving the plant around a little bit, to have the thing pop off. So the chamfer is a nice little added thing that we do to that clamp. So there you have it. Um, that's the uh, plant 2. Um, Oh, I did forget to mention one thing, uh, and it has to do with this larger uh, lock line um, diameter. Uh, there's an, there is a nice sort of added benefit to the larger diameter beyond just the stiffness, and that is that you can clamp a second clamp to the lock line. Uh, so that's not something that's necessarily all that important, but it does um, give you some options that you didn't have before. So you can use a second clamp to extend... Uh, your existing clamp. You can also kind of put them together and make uh, make little standalone structures out of them. And the, the added stiffness of the new clamp um, uh, makes those standalone structures that you can make um, a lot more viable to use. Um, with the old clamp, if you were to connect something together and make a structure, it'd be pretty uh, pretty wimpy and pretty uh, wobbly. Uh, with these, with the stiffer new clamp, you can do things like. So here I'm kind of making like a little standalone sort of tripod with two clamps. I'd be a little hard to see what's going on there definitely, but basically you can set this on a table like I'm doing here or on the ground um, and you basically have a little standalone clamp. Uh, it's pretty useful. Um, and you can see here I've used this clip and I've clamped it to itself. So this ring is very stiff and if say you're out in the field if you put this on the ground um, and then you put your photo bag on top of that, it's a really stable standalone uh, plant support. So there's other stuff you can do kind of in that same family of ideas. Um, and that's something kind of nice about th this, this new design as well. So I think that's it for, uh, for all the features. The new plant, the plant two. Thanks for watching the video.